Hi guys. Today I'm out on Glorietta Bay, which is a back bay in San Diego Bay. And I'm doing a little drop shotting this evening. I've got a few hours of daylight left. I'm going to do some drop shotting for spotted bay bass with my new Runkle Titan 2 2000 reel. Um, I've been using this reel for about a month down here. And people have been asking for more product reviews, so I thought I'd do a product review today. We got a little bit of wind, we got some tidal movement, and I found a nice grassy area out here, and we're gonna do a little drop shotting for some spotted bay bass. There's one right there. That one. Nice. That was just on my second cast. Oh, it's a California halibut. Check that out. Just a little guy. That's not an unexpected catch. Well, I'll take a drop shot. Halibut anytime. Probably about a 15 or 16 inch fish. All right, so a little halibut to start the drop shot on my Runkle Titan 2000. Awesome. There you go. See you later, Flatty. No second cast. Nice. So when I'm out here looking for these spotted bay bass, there's a bite. I'm looking for grass flats. So if I go out there and I don't see any structure whatsoever, I'm gonna pass over those points. Here I'm fishing in about six foot of water and I can see lots of structure down there, lots of grass. I can feel that drop shot Wait pulling over the top of the grass, which is good. And right now I'm drifting, I'm sort of searching for areas that are holding fish. If I find an area that's, I'm getting bites more consistently, then I will stop and spot lock and fish that area a little more intensely. So I've been fishing with this Runkle 2000. It's a fairly small reel. I like smaller reels uh, because I tend to fish braid, so I don't need that large capacity. And what's great about this reel is a couple things. One is it has a lot of saltwater corrosion resistance. Um, they've accomplished this in two primary ways. They put a phosphate coating over the important parts that are likely to corrode. And then they also use non-reactive metals. So they're, they're using stainless steel, brass, and aluminum for most of their gear parts. So the really important parts, the parts that tend to fail, are made out of metal, but ones that are not capable of oxidizing. And then they've surrounded that with a polycarbonate or plastic body that they've skeletonized to reduce the overall weight of the reel. So you get a relatively light reel. This is a nine ounce reel, but it packs a whopping 33 pound drag system. Now that's more than I'll ever need. I just heard a big fish jump behind me. Yeah, so with a 33 pound drag system, you can really handle some big fish. I would never need that much weight. Um, it's just excessive for me. Ugh. There it goes. Got him. What do I got? Fish on. I got the tiniest little spotted bay bass. There he is. That's what I was after, though. Little bitty guy. Don't need a 33 pound drag system for him. Uh, they have three carbon washers in there that give you that drag system. It's a nine bearing reel, so it's very smooth. Like I said, pretty much most of the skeleton is made of polycarbonate or plastic, but they do have an EVA foam grip handle. It does have the switch so you can free spool if you want to. There's a lot of uh, Real companies are moving away from that, which I don't like. It comes in handy, especially uh, when having to retie things up or pull a new line out. Caught that fish right on the break. There's a there's a hole out here. It drops off to 15 feet. When it goes from 8 feet to 15, that's where I've been getting all my bites in this transition, where it goes from a shallow, weedy area off to a deeper, less weedy area. But if you get too shallow, like up around 6 feet, it gets really mossy. So it's a very 
narrow band that I'm finding these fish. Now they make uh, 2,000 and 3,000 spools that have the 33 pound drag. And then I think above that, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 and so on, it's a 44 pound drag. So if you like to go after bigger game fish, you can easily do that. Uh, I think the five or 6,000 would be perfect for a lot of our salmon fisheries in the Northwest. And I like this 2,000 for sort of this inshore San Diego Bay stuff, but also when I get home, it's gonna be perfect for trout and walleye jigging. Yeah, There we go, there's fish. Nice. Swimming at me. Swimming at me. What do I got? He hit as soon as I hit the bottom. Oh, it's a nice spotty. Excellent. Woohoo. There we go. That's what I wanted. Towards the end of the day here, losing my daylight. Now I got myself spotty. Hey, give me back my plastic. It's still in his mouth. There you go. Pretty little spotty. Of course, the nice thing is this reel will pick up about 30 inches with every crank, so you can catch up those fish when they bite. It happens a lot when you're drop shotting. You get a, tend to get a little slack, especially when you're moving while drop shotting. Now we're doing all right. We got a halibut and two spotties in just about an hour and a half. I'm gonna give it another 15, 20 minutes before the sun drops down behind the palms. I spooled this reel up with 20 pound braid and I got more than enough line on there. The nice thing is these spools are braid ready so they have that little rubberized base to it that lets it grip. So I don't know if you've ever had it happen but uh, sometimes if you go to a bait shop and they don't know what they're doing and they'll spool your braid up on there and they don't put any tape down there because some of the older reels a lot of the reels even modern reels don't have that textured rubber base is your braid will get wet and then it solidifies into this solid core or this like tube of braid and uh, when you go to set the hook or something the whole all the line will just spin as one on your spool Ooh, there's a bite well i'm running out of daylight here the sun's Headed down behind the buildings and the palm trees. Did okay for an hour and a half session. Got a couple spotties and a California halibut. Uh, just drop shotting little zoom flukes on number two drop shot hooks from Gamakatsu. Pretty simple setup, just two hooks stacked. And then you want about a foot, foot and a half um, down to your drop shots. So that keeps you above all the eelgrass. Uh, that's down there. That way you're not getting your hooks all bound up with weeds all the time. That's a very effective way to fish these flats out here with the grass. That's where the fish are is in those flats with vegetation. I'll put links to this Titan 2 reel from Runkle. Um, it's a mid-priced reel, so about 50 bucks. I think it's a pretty good value. I've had it down here now for a month. I fished it in the salt pretty much four or five days a week and all i'm doing is just lightly rinsing it when i get back and i've got no corrosion it stayed ultra smooth it's kept sand out of there it's done a pretty good job i've been really impressed with it and the drag system works great i've got some really big uh calico bass on this thing and uh it's done very well handling those fish especially in a lot of current and tidal movement so all right guys i'll see you next time just remember fish smarter not harder. Oh, there's fish. Oh, that's nice fish, too. Oh. Nice. Another halibut. Just a little guy.